I think one of the biggest questions I get asked about Chaos Zero Nightmare is how does save data work? Because like for the first few months of this game, everybody was like, we don't actually know how save data works. It's a fucking magical journey that no one really knows how it works, but, but people have worked it out. Uh, and there's some really great resources for figuring that out. There's a great website, uh, which I'll show you later on. I'll link it in the description below. And there is also a really great set of visual graphics out there. This one's by Cosmic Plays Gadget, who's got his own YouTube channel too. Uh, and you can, I'm going to go through those in this video. But for the most part, you're probably going to wonder why, like the biggest question, like, why am I getting basic cards that's added back to my deck when I remove them at the end of a run? Why am I getting divine epiphanies removed? Why are they going back to their normal epiphany? Why am I having copies of cards removed at the end of my run? And it's all to do with faint memory or save data. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to the level of difficulty of chaos run that you're running, but also decisions that you make with your deck as that chaos run progresses. This right here is one of my better Veronica decks. You can see I've got no basic cards or no basic attacks and shields in it. I've got four copies of a zero cost repose. Everything else has a normal epiphany on it. No neutral cards added, no forbidden cards, no monster cards, etc. I haven't quite capped out the save data that I could have gone for. The maximum that I could have gone for was 160, but I'm gonna to explain to you how I got this deck how the save data built up as the run progressed and how you can work that out for your own decks as well. It is probably one of the most common things that I get asked with Chaos Zero Nightmare and I wanna do a video on it to explain it. But firstly, because we do, this is my typical watch time for my channel. Now, this is not unusual. My channel has covered probably like 10 different games at this point. So the majority of my subscribers probably aren't interested in Chaos Zero Nightmare. But if you're a Chaos Zero Nightmare watcher that is watching and you aren't subscribed, please feel free to do so. I know YouTube works in funny ways now where you're going to get recommended content from people that you've watched, even if you're not subscribed to them. Uh, but it helps me for you guys to subscribe. It just makes my content more relevant for the sort of, the, the, I guess the audience that likes this kind of content. So it would be really useful if you guys felt like subscribing, I would be really appreciative. The first thing we're gonna cover, and I did cover this in another video, but I do wanna go into it in more detail here, is save data. This is probably the most confusing thing about Chaos Zero Nightmare and understanding how this actually affects debt. All right, so before we get into looking at actually some decks, I thought it might be best to talk through this graphic in a bit more detail so you guys understand where we're going with it because it is a complex system. And frankly, like it's going to be difficult to track as you're going through chaos modes, but it's always worth it to track because if you don't know where your save data value is in the middle of a run, then you might make some poor choices around epiphanies. You might not know how much you can copy, how much you can remove, etc. So... First of all, the faint memory that you see, I'm gonna show you here quickly. So the faint memory that you see at the bottom of everyone's kind of like save data, that is the equivalent to the save data that you see over here on the left-hand side. So the cap at tier 15 is 170. Most people are not gonna to get to tier 15 though because it's difficult to roll a tier 14 in the first place. Uh, and so therefore, you, most people are going to be rolling tier 13s and going into nightmare mode and getting to a save data cap of 160. It costs a lot to re-roll a tier 15. I personally have been playing for months and I've never actually done a tier 15. Admittedly, I'm not a hardcore sweaty, but I've never done a tier 15. So first of all, equipment. This is something that is, is a bit of a myth in Chaos Zero Nightmare. Equipment costs absolutely zero. Mythic equipment and legendary equipment do not contribute to the faint memory that you have on your character. Crazy, I know. Most people think that the number that you get, so obviously if you get the, the, the equipment, it increases the big number that you get on your save data, the, the terabyte, I think. There's like terabytes of information that go into the save data, right? That is increased by having good equipment, but it doesn't actually affect your deck. Uh, uh, sort of save data value. And that's something that I think a lot of people didn't realize, myself included, for a very long time. Your eight base cards cost zero. And what I mean by eight base cards is, uh, if I go to my Veronica's cards, the top row and the bottom row are your base cards. So your epiphany cards that you get granted via epiphanies and the starting four cards that you get guaranteed in your deck do not cost any save data value. And base epiphanies on those also do not cost any val any uh, any save data value. So 
non-divine epiphanies on your base cards do not cost any save data, which is important to know. Next, neutral cards getting added to your deck cost 20 points. And then if they were to get an epiphany, they cost an extra 10 points. If they were then get to get a divine epiphany, it would cost an extra 10 points. So a neutral card with a divine epiphany would cost 40 points. That's quite a lot of points. And so therefore, that's why most people elect not to add neutral cards to their deck because they take up save data value that ultimately could be going somewhere else. Forbidden cards cost 20 points. They cannot be copied. They cannot be uh, have an epiphany applied. And therefore, it's a flat 20 points. In some cases, like for instance, in the case that I've currently got here, actually adding a forbidden card could have been a good thing because it would have got me to the cap of 160 that I was running at. I kind of missed 20 points of save data value here. Monster cards cost 80 points. Monster cards are unbelievably costly and really crap. Most people do not add monster cards to their deck it's not worth it. There are some instances, and I've seen this very rarely, where you maybe want to slim your deck down uh, and kind of add in a really good monster card, like the one that copies a card in your deck. That can be really good, but it's so difficult to make that happen. And also because removing cards also costs safe data value, it's difficult to get a slim enough deck with just the monster card. Copying cards... Uh, costs progressively more so copying a card your first copy is free your second copy is 10 points your third copy is uh, 30 points your fourth copy is 50 points and your uh, fifth copy is 70 points i personally have never seen more than three additional copies of a card in a deck i've never seen four additional copies of a card in a deck and i've certainly never seen five additional copies of a card in a deck so most people spend 40 points copying cards Removing cards, the first removal of a card is free if it's not a basic card. That's an important note. The second removal of a card is 10 points. The third removal of a card is 30 points. The fourth removal is 50. The fifth removal is 70. If these are basic cards, you add 20 points to every single time that you remove one of these. So, for instance, removing your first card is 20 points. Removing your second card is uh, 30 points removing your third card is 50 points so removing three basic cards so simply removing rapid fire rapid fire and the shield in veronica's deck would cost me 20 plus 30 plus 50 so that's 100 points so if you remove all of your basic cards that's 100 points already that have been uh taken from your deck a divine epiphany costs 20 points if you divine epiphany the card that you wish to copy that is going to be 20 points extra every time you copy it so instead of going from 40 points for copying cards you're going to go from uh you're going to get 20 plus 20 which is 30 plus 20 which is 50 and it's 100 points to copy all those cards you cannot remove all basic attacks and shielding uh, cards and also get three copies of a divine epiphany card that you want in your deck that is really important to note however there is a slightly weird way around this where converting a card costs 10 points and then removing a converted card is simply removing a neutral card which is going to cost you zero for the first one so you're actually saving 10 points every time you remove a converted card because it, it's going to cost 10 points to convert a card but then if you remove it uh it it, it then costs zero so it's it's better to convert a card and then remove it than it is to just straight up remove it. Additionally, there are some events like the mutant sample event in Lab Zero, which converts a card and then automatically just removes it from your deck at the end of the run and doesn't cost you anything to do so. So that's an important part to note. With that in mind, let's talk a little bit about, and I'll show you there's a great tool on, online, which I'll link in the, in the description below. Let's talk a little bit about how we would get to a save data value. So this is my one of my better veronica decks and you can see i've got four copies of repose including the base copy i've removed all basic cards i have no divine epiphanies and no forbidden cards i actually could have had one divine epiphany in this deck and still been fine at the faint memory cap unfortunately didn't get lucky enough to get a divine epiphany on this run but it still is a really good veronica deck because it is 
for Raposas. If I'd got Sir Kowalski at zero cost, this would have been an absolutely beautiful deck. Basically the best possible Veronica deck, bar having maybe Giant Ballista that I could get here. I want to show you this website, though, because it's a great way of kind of running through and figuring out as you go how much things are going to cost and what it would cost to uh, sort of build a deck based on the save data as you're going. So you can select which characters you're kind of doing a run with. And what you've got right here is I'm going to go to tier 14. So that's my cap. And we're going to we're going to build the deck that I just built and show you how the, the costs start to stack up. So we could... But what happened is I removed two from fate. So I removed two from the beginning of the game. So you can see I've currently got 20 points removing a basic tick card. I've now got an extra 30 points removing another basic card. I then removed one from a shop, which suddenly becomes 100 points simply for removing my three basic cards. I got a normal epiphany on firing preparation, which doesn't cost anything. I got a normal epiphany on repose, but I duplicated it three times, taking me to 140. A normal epiphany here, a normal epiphany here, and a normal epiphany, ooh, not that, a normal epiphany, uh, so you can't do anything on bombard bombardment prep. I could have had a divine epiphany on Sir Kowalski and maxed my cap, but that's all I could have done. I could have added a forbidden card, uh, and that would have been a way of getting up to the cap, but ultimately, this is kind of getting to the point where I had a pretty good spot. Now, actually, let's reset this and let's see if we can do it in a slightly more efficient way. Uh, so I'm going to have to go through and let's just, again, pick Serenio or Veronica Cassius. Let's go to Veronica. I just You don't need to set the save data tier, but I think it's just nice to do so. So let's instead say that I converted to a neutral card and converted to a neutral card. So I actually converted two neutral cards. And then let's say that I converted to a, a remove tag here which as you can see, removes itself at the end of the deck. So I converted these two to rapid fire, let's say, and then I'm going to remove them. So what I'm actually now going to do is I'm actually going to remove and I'm going to I remove these at shops. So I remove this as a shop and I remove this at a shop. So I've actually only now spent 30 points instead of 100 in terms of removals because it costs me 10 to convert them and then I'm going to remove them which costs zero and then costs 10. So I actually only spent 30 points. I come to 10 points to convert them. The first removal was a, um, the first removal was free. The second removal was 10 points. So I've actually only spent 30 points removing two rapid fires here. This now then means if I get a normal epiphany on fire pressure, if I got a divine epiphany on repose and then duplicate, 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 I'm actually up to 150 points. And I could have had a divine epiphany duplicated four times and it would have been completely fine if i got the illusion of a golden daffodil let's um take that back though for the time being and just say normal let's say that i didn't get the chance to convert though let's just say that i removed this from the shop that would take me up to 80 points so to really really min max this i could also convert this to a neutral and then remove at the shop that would be 70 points rather than 100 so i'd save 30 points overall doing that but the best way possible is to do this by doing a, uh, a converted to a remove tag which automatically removes itself at the end of the run which would be the most cost you know the most efficient way to do this so really really obviously you can see really fantastic way to kind of reduce your save data liability is going for the convert option which is why when i have the fate option to convert cards i sometimes will do that because it means I can remove them in shops and actually I can be much more efficient with my save data. So that's something that's really worth noting. Um, but yeah, they, it basically gives you now the option to have more divine epiphanies here. Obviously, if I just went for normal duplicates here like this, I'd have I had 60 points. So I could I could go for a divine epiphany on Sir Kowalski. I could look for a divine epiphany on firing preparation if I really wanted to, a divine epiphany on this one. And that would still get me to 140. So I could actually seek way more divine epiphanies to min max my deck out so that's just a, a visual example of like how the save data works this website that i'll link you in the uh, description below is really good and obviously massive props to uh cosmic plays gacha as per usual for his really fantastic save data guide but it's a great way of understanding how to build a deck and i hope that it was helpful for you that's just one of the hidden mechanics i probably could i probably could make a whole guide on save data to be honest with you uh, but i'm going to talk about some of the other mechanics in the game that are also worth talking about too